doing? actually had to bring a bookcase from home and put it in her office uh, because every time she caught me reading a book when I was supposed to be paying attention to a lesson, she would take the book away. <laughs> and eventually she had no desk, so she had to bring in a, a bookcase and put it in her office. So, you know, she had like the entire Zan series and every, every science fiction book ever. Because uh, 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 I'd be in class and, and she'd be given a lesson and, and it's like, well, I already read the lesson and I got it. so. Why shouldn't I read the book? I always felt she was, in retrospect, I think she was very conflicted about that. <laughs> Here's a student not paying attention, but I'm taking his book away. That seems, you know, counterproductive to education. But, um, is it okay if we just do like question and answer? Yes. And is that is that fine by you guys? Okay. Um, but for it to work, someone has to ask a question. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Why did I cut my hair? Um, well, I mean, I thought it was thematic to the release of changes when I went out, and I wanted to really shock my wife. <laughs> so I left with the hair down to like the middle of my back, and like the full, I've been riding for three months beard. Um, that's, where, that's where my inspiration comes from. My muse lives in the beard, apparently. But um, I went out with all, with all that, and got the hair down to the crew cut and had the beard taken off and came back in and waited for her to freak. And we have one of those conversations that goes on for 20 minutes where she doesn't look up from what she's doing, you know, uh, to notice. And finally I got tired of waiting for the, for the, for the bomb to drop and just sat down and started watching TV. And, you know, maybe 15 minutes later she's like, oh my God, <laughs> if we hadn't been talking, I would have shot you. <laughs> That's a, a charming woman is my baby. <laughs> Uh, in the gray shirt. Uh, we ever going to find out about Gates past, such as uh, his uh, Kincaid's Are we ever going to find out about Kincaid's past? Um, maybe a bit more, maybe not. Uh, I'm not sure how we'll do that yet. Um, I'm actually, I kind of have this vague project in mind of doing the Dresden Files Universe version of the French and Indian, uh, French and Indian War. Which would be so much fun because it's all the it's all the old folks on the senior council that, that are so angry at Harry for being a punky young wizard. That was when they were the punky young wizards. Um, uh, so that, that that would be that would be a really good time, I, I think. But uh, of course, the danger of that is I'm going to have to learn about the French and Indian War. <laughs> that's one of those projects I could get into and, and, and then forget. Oh wait a minute, I'm supposed to be writing a book, aren't I? And, uh, it was blue shirt with a hat. Um, what are the chances of getting me to come out as a guest and sitting in on the role-playing games at a gaming convention that they run? Um, well, let's see. Uh, getting me out there, I mean, I'm, I'm not traveling next year at all uh, in honor of the Mayan apocalypse. <laughs> and and I, I, figure, I figure maybe I'm a little jaded because it's, it's you know, this is the seventh or eighth apocalypse I've I lived through. Um, but if we're all here in 2013, then I'll, I'll, I'll resume my schedule and I try and go to at least one small con, one medium-sized con, and one big con every year. Uh, because the, the small and medium-sized cons, even though I don't get to see as many people, they have their own advantages too. And, you know, I can actually hang out with folks and talk and stuff like that. And nobody says, Jim, you've made this room into a fire hazard. <laughs> like that guy in Atlanta. Uh, right here. I was attracted to Harry Dresden about his sci-fi series. Do you, are you happy with the way it turned out, or do you regret that now because of the changes they made? Uh, this fellow is, uh, um, was attracted to the books through the series on sci-fi. Was I happy with it, uh, or was I, or was I upset with the changes they made? Um, I like to th I like to think of, of my cups as half full. Uh, uh, there, there's three kinds of people in the world: uh, uh, optimists who think the cup is half full, pessimists who think the cup is half empty, and engineers who think the cup is overdesigned by 100%. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, 
I, I think all in all, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, and I, I say that because I saw the first draft, the, the first treatment. <laughs> Which none of you saw, I'd be glad, because there's not enough brain bleach in all the world. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, yeah, all in all, it was okay. There were some things that I that, that, that I was really annoyed with at the time. Uh, what they did with Bob annoyed the hell out of me. Uh, but Terrence Mann's a good actor, and he's a really nice guy in person. And, I, and he had he had me sold on it by about episode ten. Uh, uh, so I mean, it's a darn shame it stopped when it did. I think it could have gotten it could it, it could have gone to to bigger and better things. They were getting their stuff together production wise and so on as they went along. Uh, but on the other hand, it, it might be a good thing that it did stop because uh, uh, you know. Before they did anything completely squirrely with it, it might be, you know, maybe it's a good thing it got canceled. I don't know. Um, but all, all in all, uh, it was a positive experience. I got to go up and do my Stanley appearance in the show, you know, which was fun. I'm in the background of Butter Smork somewhere, being one of his assistants. I don't actually get to talk or anything. You have to join a guild to do that. <laughs> Man, I'm in too many guilds already. <laughs> You use a lot of M names in the series, Mad Max, Maeve, Molly, Michael, etc. Is there a reason for that, or just they sound good? I use a lot of M names. Is there a reason for that? Um, maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no, there's no conscious reason for it, although all, uh, uh, my beta readers, whenever I show up with a new character named M with an M, they're like, another M name, another M name! It's like, oh, come on. Get used to it, M. Mm. You can't say mm without M. Uh, uh, but no, no conscious reason. Some of them were pre-named for me, though. You know, Matt was pre-named for me. I, I didn't name her. Uh, Archangel Michael was pre-named for me. Same thing. So, uh, I, I feel it's been, the case has been overstated. The, the case is in favor of too many M names. Uh, black T-shirt, standing up. Sorry, when she takes the body, does what? Oh. Oh, when, when Corpse Taker took a body like Lucio's body, does it reset the ages? No, the, the, the bodies are just suits. And, you know, Lucio's was more, Lucio's original suit was more worn out than the new one that she got. Uh, the only difference. Uh, right here, blue shirt. Did you always intend to introduce Mouse, or did this just not develop into a computer like you wanted? Did I uh, always intend to introduce Mouse, or did Mr. just not develop into the companion that I wanted? <laughs> um, Mr. is a cat, and cats do not develop to anything. <laughs> and I feel that to do anything like that would have been to betray the very nature of cats, and uh, they might they might declare war on me if that happens. <laughs> I, swear to, I swear to God, I'm writing this... Uh, the, I'm eventually going to write this steampunk universe that, that I run my game in, uh, where the cats uh, are, are the cats have opposable thumbs. And, uh, uh, the, yeah, you don't want to mess with a cat with opposable. They have they have opposable thumbs and matches. And so <laughs> better treat them with respect, or there's going to be some trouble. Uh, but yeah, Mouse was created uh, um, as Dresden's enemies were getting tougher and tougher. It seems like it would be a simpler and simpler solution to kill him in his sleep. Uh, so I wanted, to, I wanted to be sure that he had a, a, a real solid uh, uh, protection system built for him. Uh, so uh, uh, that was one of the reasons Mouse uh, kind of got sent his way in, in terms of the author sending it his way. Uh, but uh, I really like the way he developed it. And Mr. Mister is going to be mighty no matter what. I mean, he's a cat. Uh, he's, he's not a special cat or anything. He's a cat. <laughs> How much better could he be? <laughs> at least, and then at least that's his perspective. Um, right here in black. Are we going to hear more about Mr. Farabak? Are we going to hear more about Farabak? Yeah, later later in the series. Um, I'm, I'm fundamentally lazy as a writer, and I don't like to introduce things that I'm not going to use. And I like to reuse things oh. whenever I can. Uh, uh, you know, and I think it makes a better story that way, too. But mostly, I'm lazy. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Hi, yeah. When you started writing these, I remember you saying once that you... Uh, were taking a writing class, and your teacher said, well, just try this formula, and you, you fought against it or something, and then when you finally did use, quote, the formula, and whatever she was teaching to you, it, it was successful. Is that right, or could 